My name is Nathan. I am a programmer and artist. Most of you have met and talked about myself enough, so I'm just going to tell you about the project that I'm working on. So, I've had this idea for a while in various forms and just recently began to work on it. The basic idea is uh, to take audio input and to do visualization of the input in a way that uh, maps that visual information over time and creates like a visual record of the audio that happened in a certain place over a certain period of time. So I'm kind of codenaming this the audio imprint clock. And it's going to, in this, this first iteration, going to be some kind of uh, wall hung sculpture. So it's going to kind of look like a clock. We'll have an LCD screen behind a circular facade, so it'll kind of look like a, a circular LCD panel. And basically, we'll have uh, this, imagine a second hand, a minute hand, or an hour hand, moving clockwise around the clock. And as it moves, it's creating different, uh, leaving trails of the audio spectrum as it's recording that information. So that's kind of the basic idea. And uh, I start, when, usually when I'm working on things like this, I'll start a processing and I'll try and kind of validate the idea and uh, try and do just a bare bones implementation and say, okay, you know, what are some kind of things that I can do to see is this a good idea or is this not a good idea? Because I don't, I don't create artwork for all of the different ideas that I have. I kind of, you know, want to see this, if I think it's going to have some lights on it. So I started processing with this as well and basically took a built-in um, audio library and processing that allows you to um, divide up audio input into frequency spectrum. Basically what you would see in like a, a V meter with you, you've got your, your bass frequencies all the way up to your you know, high travel frequencies and you can split those out. Um, and basically lay that out along that second hand line um, and instead of clearing a frame every time as I draw, just allowing that imagery to accumulate over time. So here's some of the early experiments and things that I've been getting. I started to think about different periods of time that you have. So you have uh, one revolution in a minute representing seconds. So you have 60 seconds for 360 degrees. Uh, then you can also think about uh, 60 minutes in an hour. So it taking an hour to go one revolution. And then you can also think of taking a day to go in one revolution for 24 hours. And I started thinking about, you know, how can I maybe combine these different periods of time visually? Um, so different ideas of playing, you know, maybe the maybe the fast moving uh, minute revolution is on the outside and the other ones are on the inside, or maybe I'm taking different colors uh, for the seconds and minutes and hours and overlaying the colors. Uh, but the basic idea is just to kind of uh, see how I can visually represent the audio. So I'll show you some of the early processing sketches and I'll show you kind of where I'm at right now with this. Let's see if we got, yay, input. Okay, so you can see as I'm talking, you can kind of see virtually where. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, whistling is cool too. <laughs> Can I get a round of applause? <laughs> so pretty cool, right? This is like um, you know, this is like visually telling the story of what we just experienced in the past uh, forty-five seconds. So, let's see what else we have here. Can you play it back? That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> yeah, so there's lots of different ideas on, on where to take this, and, and playing back is one idea, kind of being able to scrub back in time and, and yeah, take one of those relive that. Yeah. Kind of that. Or, even, or even doing a complete cycle where you, you create visual from audio, and then you take audio and feed that into an algorithm that creates, uh, or to take the visuals and feed that into an algorithm that recreates the audio at whatever resolution you're able to capture.
capture and the, and the visuals. That would be the draw the video. Yeah. Draw, draw the song. <clears throat> so that's, let's see. I'm just going to keep on pulling these up here. Uh, I'm also trying to think about, you know, if, if this is like a wall hung sculpture of some sort, what level of interactivity do I allow uh, a person to influence it versus how much do I decide kind of up front, like this is what it is. Um, so just thinking about take, you know, exposing different aspects of the algorithm as, you know, potentiometer knobs and sliders, and, uh, maybe even incorporating some, uh, like, LED-based VU meter to show kind of the real-time uh, data as it's, as it's being reported. Uh, let me go ahead and jump to. So I started. So I started processing because it's very easy. How much um, code is there? Are we looking at the? I'll, I'll show you here. I'll, I'll open it up. That's it. And how much of it, like library calls and other a bunch of other stuff? Uh, you know, processing is all about libraries. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, Minim is the name of the audio processing library that's built into processing. Um, and basically, you can see in the setup, we initialize the library, we get the line in, uh, we set up a fast Fourier transform to get our frequency spectrum. Uh, we set the parameters here, and then the draw loop. Um, is basically rotating over time, and we're incrementing the angle of rotation based on the frame count. Um, and inside the for loop here, we're drawing, uh, you know, depending on which one I was showing you, either a series of circles that correspond to low frequency to high speed frequency along that line, or possibly one line or squares or you know shapes, different things like that. Um, and that's basically what, what creates the visual. So for this project, I know like I, I started processing, but I'm now moving into Open Frameworks, which is a C++ framework that has the ability to um, do all this stuff on a Raspberry Pi. So I'd like the actual finished sculpture to run off of the Raspberry Pi because it's 35 bucks and it has a really powerful GPU and um, it runs quietly and for you know with low power, it's very nice. So yeah, this motion could make for an interesting interactive right. aspect to it. Yeah, definitely. So this is kind of my oh, okay. So there are some bugs in the audio library for this and that it doesn't always start up correctly, but we've got to figure out why. Um, usually <coughs> within a few okay, there we go. Alright. So this is in uh, Open Frameworks now. So I have a few different things going on that I want to point out. Uh, in the upper left-hand side, I have uh, what's called a FBO, or Frame Buffer Object, which is just like a texture, basically. You can draw into a texture and then use it in other places. So the, the kind of raw material, um, you know, translating the audio input into um, grayscale data is going into this, and it just goes top to bottom um, over and over and over again. Then I have another texture here that has this gradient that's kind of following uh, this line down here. And that, if you've ever used Photoshop and, and done multiplication, this gets multiplied on here. And you'll see when, it, when this actually gets around. Let me turn up the When this actually gets around and completes the cycle, you'll see this looks like it starts to fade back in front of the advancing line. Uh, so that effect is, is based on basically multiplying that gradient on there. Um, this is my obviously my real-time uh, information down here, just showing what the frequency spectrum looks like. And the way that I'm getting it from a square to the dot to the kind of you know radial format here is for the shader. It's basically reinterpreting the coordinates of this texture uh, using a little bit of math <laughs> to remap it to um, this kind of like a dial. So this is my you know algorithmic artists have this thing about debug view. 
the arc that you see when you see somebody's debug view, this is my debug view. So there's some things that I can kind of mess with. Um, some of this goes into the shader, like exposure and gamma. So I'm actually rendering into uh, a high dynamic range uh, frame buffer, which means it's kind of like if, you, if you've ever seen HDR photography, even, even the iPhones now do it, where you basically have a wide, um, too, too wide of a range to capture in one photograph, so it takes multiple photographs and gives you that extra data, and then you choose how you want that data to be compressed into something that's visible to the naked eye. So I can do that in real time here um, by tweaking the shader. So the exposure and the gamma are things that you can see in other similar types of controls that do that. Um, I'm also doing uh, the mapping from grayscale to color in real time, so I can kind of mess with those colors. Uh, I can mess with where that transition takes place between the two colors. Um, and then I can also, right now, I'm, I'm mapping from uh, 1 hertz to 20,000 hertz. But if, say we were more interested in like human vocal range, maybe we'd go from uh, like 50 to 2,100 or something like that, and just look at 7 kilohertz. 7 kilohertz. Human, well, not including um, harmonics. Just like, like what you could sing, you know, something that you could do. I think that's what they can for a voice over IP or something like that. Okay, so let's see here. This is, this is a good one to actually do some, some singing or speech on. So let's be quiet for a minute and then. Uh,